Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here at PA Creative. Today I am super excited to announce a new plugin. It's called Divi Contact Form Helper. Let's take a look at all the settings and what this does. We're going to start here on the blog post. So we're giving the contact form module in Divi a serious upgrade. And just to be clear, this is not a new module, but we're adding settings to the existing module and then adding settings in theme options and other admin settings in the back end of your WordPress site. So it's like a major add on to the existing form to make it everything that it needs to be filling in all the things that are missing. All right, some of those things are going to be big and super, super useful. Let's take a look. In fact, in version 1.0, this is just the first version, I've counted 33 settings that we have added. So this is kind of crazy. Let's take a look and I'll try to hurry. Um, I'll try to give you just more of an overview and then we'll look into other videos and documentation to go further. But for this video, I'm gonna to try to keep it as an overview. All right, so we have file uploads, you know, one of the most common feature requests. So now you can upload any file attachments to the form. SMTP integration. So if you don't need to add another plugin, we have all the settings for you to add the SMTP. SMTP. We have all the settings for you to add the SMTP integration into our plugin settings. Confirmation email. So right now when you send an email, it comes to the admin. Well, now you can send one to the person who is submitting it. And we'll talk more about that, but there's, these are not in any particular order. Well, now we have a success button. When you fill out the form, a button can appear. You can prompt them to go somewhere else on your site to another URL, something like that. We have the ability to export the entries that are saved in the database to a spreadsheet kind of like a backup. When you submit the form, you can have it pause for a few seconds, however long you want, and then it could redirect to another page. And that's all based on your own choosing. There's a log of sent emails, which we'll talk about in uh, the back end. You have an option to make the button full width, you know, the submit button. Now here's another setting related to when you, when you upload those files and attach them to the email, you can choose yes or no to attach them also to the admin email and the confirmation email. All right, so now we can show the labels of the input fields on the form above the field form, so the input fields, right? So currently it's inside as placeholders, but if you wanna show you know, name, address, message, now they can appear above the input field. Form ID, so we have a few ways of identifying your form. So you can have multiple forms on your website and then in the back end, you'll easily be able to see where the entry came from, which form it came from. We have a date picker, so you can allow someone to maybe schedule a date. We also have a time picker, which is another feature here. So date and time pickers as fields. Now we have Zapier integration. So this is just unbelievable because you can take all of the data from your form and send it into the Zapier email parser and then integrate into any tool that you want. <laughs> um, admin emails, so again, we can, um, similar to the confirmation emails and statistics, you can enable them for in the dashboard to show them in your website dashboard, like you know how many submissions this week, that kind of thing. Save entries to database. So we're, anytime someone submits a form, instead of worrying if you lost it or maybe it went to your spam folder or the, the client didn't get it, all of those are going to be saved in your website. So that's a really big feature um, and we'll show you more of that. Focus input borders. So Divi does not have that in the current module. So when you click into the field, a lot of times you'll want that border to highlight just a little different color. It shows that you're working on that input field, right? That's very standard for other forms, but Divi didn't have it, so we've added that. Clone logs, that's another feature with our um, backend settings. We'll talk about that. Submit button alignment. So by default, it's on the right, and you could now put it in the center or on the left. Very simple, we have alignment. 
options. Save files to database. So like when you upload the files, do you want those to also appear in the database? Or maybe you just want them to send with the email? It gives you the option. Hide placeholders. So this goes along with the show labels. So where it says your name and address and message in the, in the input fields, you may want to hide that in the actual field. Instead of saying first name in the field, you could hide it and then show the labels above. All right. You can search the entries, all of the submissions that come into the database. You could search for them using various keywords and things like that. Field icons. So now you can add an icon. So if it's your name, you may have like a little profile icon for the address, email address. You might put the at symbol, you know, etc. that kind of thing. And you can choose the color and there's an icon picker and it'll appear inside the left side of all your fields. All right. Time picker. We mentioned that custom subject line, another big one. So when that comes into your inbox or the, or the user's inbox, you can customize that subject line for the admin email and the confirmation email. They could be separate. So you might say, you know, thanks for your submission or, you know, this is a submission from contact form, whatever you can write, whatever you want there. Message pattern tags. Now this is a big one in Divi by default, you can set a message pattern. And what that does is allows you to say like the percent sign, percent, percent, and then name or first name or whatever. And that's based on the field ID. But now we've added, I forget, is it 20 some more, um, things like, um, the, the page title or the page link where the form is located, um, the form ID, you know, the user's IP address or operating system, all of those kinds of things that you should check out. So we've added a whole bunch of them. You can reply to these emails that come into the database from the back end. A redirect link, so you could set it when someone submits a form, it redirects to a custom link or to another page on your site. Email templates, basically this is like presets for when you reply to emails in the back end. Convert to post, so when someone submits a form and you may be asking for certain things that you want to convert to a post or custom post type, maybe it's a review or something like that, you can convert to post and then choose each field as a custom field in the post, right? So like, or the title or the image and those kind of things. So really nice way to convert an entry into a post or post type. We have auto backup and you can set the frequency. Um, that's the backup schedule. So it's going to back it up and send it to your email address. And it's going to be a zip file of all the entries in a spreadsheet. So we also have design settings for the success message. When you submit a form, it'll say, you know, thanks for submitting your form, whatever you want to say there. But in Divi, you can't design it. It's just generic text. But now you can use all of the normal font and text design settings. We've built them into the module. And you can also filter those entries that come into the back end. So that's a very long list. And again, we're just in version 1.0. We have ideas for the future. Um, I'm still working on demos, trying to decide how demos will work with this kind of plugin. We're working on documentation. In fact, if you go over here, pacreative.com slash doc slash Divi contact form helper, um, you'll come to our settings. Here's the settings list. So all the general settings, SMTP settings, auto backup settings, here's some admin features, and then within the module itself. All right, there's all of these custom settings in the module itself. So we kind of have three different locations in the admin and theme options and in the module. And of course you can check out the product page itself, which is a lot of the same information as this blog post. But let's go ahead and now I've installed the plugin on this new site here. So what I'm going to actually do is deactivate it real quick. And now I'm going to go to my pages. I'm going to open up this sample page. And we're going to add a contact form. All right. So just like normal, add the contact form module. Again, that's the, this is the normal module. And if you want to have some fun, just take a look at the settings that are here. Look at how they're named toggle names and things that are here. You'll soon find that there's a lot missing. All right. We're going to save this. 
Now I'm going to go and activate our plugin. So the first thing you'll notice when you do that, we have contact form here on the side. And also when you're in theme options, we have Divi contact form helper right here. Here you can see some of the general settings, um, SMTP settings, you can fill all this in, auto backup settings, choose the frequency and things like that. All right, and then when we go to the actual module, actually let me show you some of this real quick. Here's where the entries will appear. You can build templates and um, export. Here's all the settings. We've styled everything like Divi. Um, backups are gonna head over to there. Let's go to the module. We'll refresh the page. Nothing will look different because at that point right there, we've just added those basic fields. So when I open this up, now there's going to be a lot of different settings. So it's very obvious, but um, Here's the title and then admin email. You can put in the admin email address, the message. You can have a separate message pattern for that admin email. Here's the subject line. Confirmation email, the exact same thing, so you can choose to enable it. Put in the subject and the message, again, using a custom message pattern. Submission entries, and here we have save to database. And you know, save the file uploads to database and then send with attachments. You, these are all optional things. The submit button is the same as normal. Uh, this is gonna be called integrations, but um, we're gonna add more integrations, just a little teaser there, but you would put in the um, Zapier mailbox, read our documentation for that. And then after submission behavior, you can write your message. You can choose to use that button that I talked about and then the URL or choose a page. Um, the link, does it open a new tab? You can enable the redirect. You can use the redirect delay, all of these things. Um, this is the same. And then the next thing with admin label, we have a form ID. The admin label actually works as an identifier also. And then up here when you're adding your fields, under field options, you have the option to say use as file upload field. And then you can choose the maximum file size and the number of files and the file types. Or if I didn't do that, I could say, I want this one to be a date or time picker. I can choose just date picker, just time picker, date and time picker, all that kind of stuff, the format, show it in line. Do you want to have to click and then it opens or just show it by default? Let's see, what else? So under the design setting and layout, can show label and show placeholder or, you know, or not. Under fields, we have the icon right here, use icon. So you could choose an icon and choose the color. Oh, and then the input border is in here under border settings. So we have input focus border color, input focus border width and style, right? They're additional. So I'm probably missing some things, but offhand that's a quick overview. So again, you can check out the documentation. We're gonna continually be updating that. We have the essentials there now when we're releasing this and you can go check out the product page itself. As you can see, I'm very excited about this. There's a lot of features here, a lot. And it's really nice that it's just a seamless integration. Everything, in the, even in the back end, is integrated with Divi or styled like Divi. You know, when you add it, the module just takes on those new settings new terminology for some of the settings, improvements, lots of little like, even like help text and label names and things like that that you probably wouldn't notice unless you looked really close. So this is version 1.0. Like I said, there's about 33 settings so far. I also have a nice list of things that we wanted to do, but we was just like, we just gotta get this released. And so let me know what you would like to see. We would love to take feature suggestions for this plugin. Let me know, and if you're excited about this, let us know in the comments. And of course, if you're interested, you can purchase it there on the product page. All right, well, we thank you, and we are excited, and we wish you all the success with this plugin.